Hey guys, it's Sam here from Engineered as Education and today I'm going to walk you through how I unit plan. Now, I'll admit, my first couple weeks and maybe months of teaching, I didn't even know what a lesson plan was. I came straight from engineering, felt really confident, and then like, stuck. All of a sudden, I had no clue what I needed. I was finding all these different templates online, nothing just felt like it made sense. So I created my own unit planning template that I feel like really streamlines the whole process. And then also it kind of auto creates the best sheets for you ever. So I'll show you that in a little bit. But the first thing that I want to tell you about is the unit that I'm going to be planning with you today. Today I'll be planning out my intro to physics unit. Now physics is a new to me course for teaching, but I love physics. So I have the textbook as a guideline, but I know I want to spice things up a little bit. So to start out with, I needed to create a curriculum map. This is nothing fancy. This is just my units broken down into the big topics I want to cover and then how many days I think each unit is going to take. This way I know how much I can fit into the year. If you don't have one of those, don't worry. I recreated my biology curriculum order this year and I googled everything. There are so many schools and districts out there and also free curriculum maps that you can look at just to see what order you need to go in or might look at some ways to spice up what you already have, which is what I was doing with biology. I know I wanted to change some things around and the internet is a limitless source of really great ideas. <laughs> Once I have my curriculum map all made out, I turn to a mind map. And a mind map for me is the best way to visualize all of the different concepts I wanna teach. So here's an image of the intro to physics mind map that I created. So I start with the big unit concept in the middle and then I break it up into the sections that I know I want to teach around the outside. Then I start pulling out the colors. So blue are the different skills that I know I want to incorporate. I have certain skills that I want to incorporate into all of my lessons and all of my units all year long. Whether those are research skills, even just technology skills, um, email skills, lab writing and lab reports, CER practice, those types of things. So I added those skills around the outside and then I came in and I broke down the sections by the smaller concepts that I know I need to teach to make sure that that concept makes sense. If I was doing this for a unit that was mid-year, I would probably also add some key vocab words and terms or equations on there just so I knew exactly what needed to happen. From here, I have a really great idea of what different pieces I need to put together to make sure that my unit makes sense. So I move over to my unit planning guide. Let me show you a little bit of what this guy is and how I use it. So this is part of my unit planning guide that I like to print out so that I can hand write first and then I'll show you what it looks like once I put it on the computer. So I've got the title of my course and then this is a full year overview so I can see as I go how all of my units stack up. Once I get to planning all of them I can actually fill this in with an idealistic sort of guide and I can take my school calendar and start crossing off days that I know I'm going to be out or that there's going to be field trips or in-service days. Unfortunately with everything going on we're still not entirely sure what this fall looks like so it's just going to be blank for now. So I started off and I put the title of my unit so my intro to physics unit it's going to be the first unit I have in my four quarters. I plan on starting on the first day of school. I originally thought it was going to be 10 days, but here's why I handwrite these things, because then I figure out how long I think it will be versus how long it actually ends up being, and we go through a few different iterations. So you'll see by the time we end this, I'm not at 10 days, I'm not even at the next number that I tell you. Then I highlight it on the calendar so I know where, where about it falls, and I can just add to it as I go, and I'll create probably five or six of these as the year goes on with what I think is going to happen versus what actually did happen. Great way to look at where you're spending your time and then you can look back and reflect for the next year. So the next page is going to be a unit checklist and there's two different versions of this. This is the layout I like to have for my units so I know that I will always have a unit cover sheet to give to my students which actually can be populated by this document as well. I'm going to create a note packet and then I like to send out an email with any big projects or any big expectations for that unit, especially when it comes to dissection in biology. That's a good one to have. And then I'll have my two sections for activity prep where I can have the name of the lab and the packet and then I'll list my materials. If I have quizzes, I usually do weekly quizzes. I won't for this intro unit, um, but then I can label the quiz and what it's over here. 
I try not to give more than three, maybe four assignments a unit, and then the different things that I would like to have prepared for my test prep. So study guides, the test and the key all completed, and review activity. So this will be one of the last things that I fill out after I filled everything else, but then I can go through and this is my nice little checklist to make sure the unit is all in order. Then we get to the lesson planning page. And let me just tell you that once I finish this all up, this is not going to look like this anymore because things change from when you move to from your mind map to this, to the computer version, and even after that. So I start with my days over here because our first day of school is actually pretty flexible. I just numbered these one, two, three, four, and so on. But you could put the actual date that you plan on teaching that concept and that lesson. The title of my lesson and maybe a couple things that I know I need to cover during that lesson. Then I'll also include supplies that I need to have ready to go for that day. Any assignments that I give out. And then these are the different um, topics or the different categories for my grade book that I have. So I'll be able to highlight or underline which category it falls under, what date it's due, and how many points it's going to be. Later on, I can go in and add standards. It's not super effective for an intro unit, but later on they'll be there. And then I can type in any notes that maybe I need to know before this lesson starts or reflection notes for afterwards. So I just start going through and basically working my way around the mind map, putting the information into these different days, things that I know I would need to have ready for those topics, and then the assignments for my students. And as I go, I kind of build on it. You can see here as I was writing it, I was like, wait, I can reorganize this and make this a little bit better from what was on my mind map and what my original plan was. So I went ahead and reordered the different days. And then we kind of get back on track. I ended up with 16 days on this plan, but I will take you over to the computer and we'll get it all typed up and we'll see where it goes from there. So this is my unit planning document and I do have this available on TBT, but please don't feel like you have to go buy it if you would like to create one of your own or if you just want to take what you really like from this and use it in your own time, that is also perfectly fine. So what I'm going to be doing is it's already labeled for physics and I'm going to be typing in my intro to physics unit and it's going to start tentatively on the 18th, which if I look over at my calendar, which I'll highlight once it's all printed out, then that would take me through, that'll take me through September 8th and that will be the 16 days that I've currently planned for. This file is going to change constantly and that's totally fine. So here, this is where I will type my full unit name. It won't be able to pull the start date for you because you could use this for any of the units you insert above and it's going to be 16 periods. I'll come back to this page again in just a minute. So here is my lesson breakdown um, page and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert the information that I have created and also reviewed from these pages and put all of the details in here and the reason that I'm going to type it up even though I've already written it out is because this is going to auto populate several other sheets for me so I'm going to go through and quickly type in my whole unit and then I will be right back. something that I want to change up. What I had originally intended the sheet to be is a Monday through Friday so that each week you're just looking at that one page and the 18th starts on a Tuesday so I'm actually gonna go ahead and shift all of these down.
actually able to bump this down to 14 days as I was typing it up and kind of looking at really what was going on here. So I'm going to change these numbers, which is totally fine. And it's all about flexibility. You really don't want to like tie yourself into a specific timeline if you don't have to. So all of these pages now, all of these pages now are actually going to auto populate what is my favorite part of all of this. So I can scroll down. There are 30 days worth in this packet. I didn't need 30 days. So now I have a unit checklist and this is going to be all of the different assignments that are happening within the unit. I can print this out for my students and they can have it ready to go so that they know exactly what is due and when. Then this is the unit supplies by date. So all the supplies that I typed in are listed here and it's going to tell me what, what date that lesson is gonna be on and then the supplies that I need. So by the 18th, I need to have my syllabus, my note packet, and my slides for my unit ready. And so this is going to be a really quick reference sheet I can do on Mondays and it can tell me exactly what I need to have ready or even better, if I have a student that's helping me out, maybe as a secretarial job in my classroom, and they're done early, I can have them pull out the supplies that are gonna be needed for the next day. So it'll be page two. Then here is the notes by lesson. So the lesson topic um, is gonna be listed here on the left, and this is something I would give to my admin um, for reviews. And then the notes that I type in. So right now I have some pre-written notes that I know I want to look at, but let's just say like did super fast, create more teamwork activities for next year. And that will go in and I can print this off and look, use it as a reflection for the next time that I do this. And then this is my quick unit overview. This is another great thing that you can use for either um, students who are gonna be absent for a long period of time. This sheet will tell you what the lesson topic was about. Also the assignment and the due date for the assignment. So it's not gonna tell you how many points, but it's gonna tell you when that assignment is gonna be due. This would be something great that you could share to your Google Classroom and you could put links into videos if you wanted to. And there are two pages for that for the 30 days. So now I am going to be able to print these pages off and then come back and fill this in. So I can check off when I have my unit cover sheet done. I don't have any quizzes this unit, but I do have quite a few extra assignments. So I can either scroll down and start looking at the different assignments that I have. So I have Now that this is all ready to go, I can print this whole thing out and I'll show you what that looks like. Now that I've got my unit plan all ready to go and I'm feeling really confident, I'm feeling really good, what next? So here's what I do with my unit plan now that I'm done. I'm going to have everything kept together in a binder and that binder is just going to include that one unit, just the one. That way I have it as a quick reference. It has all the worksheets, printouts of all the slides that I have, any links that I need are printed out on a piece of paper. When my students are working on their assignment or at the end of the day, I'll go back through and I'll make some notes. Either it's on the slides or on the assignment that I've given them. Maybe I need to give them a couple more days here. Maybe they really need a little bit more information on this there. I can add those into my note sections and then finish it out. When that unit's done, I can put it all into a big three inch binder and I can keep my unit plans with all the copies for that unit together in one place. Then I have it ready for next year. I can go back and make the edits super quick and everything is gonna flow from there. It's all right there for you and that is why I am in love with this planning process. It has made it so much easier and the more you go through it, the quicker it becomes. I planned this whole unit out in about an hour and a half from start to finish, from mind map, to going through and typing it all up and printing it out. Now, I do have like seven more units to do, so I'll see you later.